My special guest today is Associate Professor Sue Evans, who is the head of the Clinical Registry Unit in the Department of Epidemiology and Preventative Medicine at Monash <laughs> University here in Melbourne. Thank you for your time, Sue. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Um, you've got uh, a piece of research going in our 1st of February issue on lung cancer care in Victoria and the timeliness of the process. Can you tell me a little bit about why that research needed doing? Well, it was a gap in knowledge that we didn't understand what the trajectory was for um, patients being managed in Victoria. Mm -hmm. We certainly, there was some work that had been done previously looking at um, the quality of care, but that didn't include any data on um, how timely that care was developed that looked at other indicators. So we were keen to understand whether there was variation in the time that it was taking for patients to to be treated um, and, and looking at reasons for that okay. there was delay. Tell us a little bit about your methodology. Okay, so we use the Victorian Lung Cancer Registry. It's a, um, a registry that's been established for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. um, it operates in eight hospitals across Victoria, um, regional, some regional, uh, metropolitan, private and public. It captures about 25% of patients are notified to the lung cancer to the Victorian Cancer Registry. Right. Um, so we used that. Um, we uh, looked at the notifications as they came in from the hospitals, and then four months after their um, notification, we looked through the medical record and took details on the the date of diagnosis, making sure that that was correct, um, the date of the referral um, that was sent into the hospital and the date of the initial definitive management, so whether that was curative or palliation, we took those details. So um, then we looked at the analysis um, by the different factors that might impact on the, um, the timeliness of care, so mm -hmm. things like the patient's age, the stage of disease, um, where they were treated, their comorbidities, all those things that we would reasonably assume might impact the, the timeliness of their care. And what were your key findings? So what we found um, was that there were, um, there were differences in different stages um, in terms of reasons for delay. Mm -hmm. um, we found overall um, that there was a 53 day median wait time between, um, between referral mm -hmm. and initial definitive management. Okay, and how, um, does that, how does that compare with other countries, for example? Well, it was, it was alarming. <laughs> um, it, it was um, certainly more than we had um, anticipated. Uh, National Health Service um, target that's set in the UK mm -hmm. um, which dictates that um, patients should be seen um, within the first 62 days after referral. Okay. So 52 days you wouldn't think would be necessarily you know all that bad but then when we looked at it break, broken down by private and public um, it was obvious that the patients that were treated in the public sector were waiting considerably longer than the private and in fact nearly half of the patients in the public sector didn't or wouldn't have met that NHS target of wow. 62 days so um, yeah I mean it, it was it was alarming and we're also looking at factors that might have predicted or, or been associated um, with the the delay mm -hmm. um, and certainly when we looked at the delay between referral and diagnosis we found that um, people who were born overseas um, were more likely to wait longer for their diagnosis mm. certainly the literature um, would indicate that there um, sometimes are cultural factors uh, sometimes it's to do with the fact that people don't identify the symptoms and, and seek yeah. treatment or they don't understand the severity of the symptoms so they're what we call the patient sort of factors. Mm -hmm. um, there are also health service factors that might impact on that so for example um, it may be that people born overseas need an interpreter and the interpreter might not be available. Yeah. It could be to do with you know scheduling the outpatient's um, visits it may even be that you know they're looking for a particular doctor who has a particular language that they need to yeah. you know wait a bit longer to see that patient. We don't know, so these are all just hypotheses. Yeah. Um, we didn't collect that information, but sure. it, yeah, certainly interesting to look into. Talk a little bit about the differences in the different stages of cancers and, and what that means for the time between referral yeah. and treatment. So what we found was that um, patients who had um, 
high stage disease, so had more progressed disease, mm -hmm. were likely to be diagnosed earlier, significantly earlier than those who had um, early stage disease. So that might be because in the referral letter, you know, the the, um, the doctor was sort of prompted with hemoptysis and you know things that might suggest that the stage is is more advanced. So um, so people with more advanced disease would be seen and diagnosed earlier. Um, but then in the next stage between diagnosis and initial definitive management, patients with earlier stage disease were more likely to receive timely care. Oh. So there were, so it was sort of the opposite, which suggests that there's you know triaging happening um, mm. of the patients. So once you've got somebody who's got a diagnosis in their early stage, then you really do want to try and get them you know into treatment quickly. Thanks for your time. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks very much, Kate.